Want to make Mayhem Mode 10 easy mode? Well, today I'm going to share with you guys my Rack of Rocket build that's going to have you guys laughing at everything that comes your way. SFA, this is Lazybolt, and welcome to today's video, guys. Today I want to share with you guys my Rack of Rocket build, and the reason why I call this my Rack of Rocket build is because you're going to only be using two things with this build. Once you're going to be using your rack attacks and number two, you will be using a rocket. Now you only need one weapon for this build and that weapon alone is going to make the content super duper easy. I'm really excited about this build because it makes content really easy. As you guys may already know, for some of you who aren't aware, right now currently Flack is in a really bad state because a lot of his abilities and his skill tree are not working properly. And that is causing that some of the weapons that were very viable for him are no longer viable. And that's why this particular build is focused primarily on a couple things. Number one, it focuses on a lot of damage. Number two, it focuses on survivability. And number three, it focuses on using one primary weapon and that primary weapon being able to get you through every single content in Borderlands. So that's really important. And that's why I wanted to put this build together. Now, I will be sharing this build over on my Discord channel. The link is down below to the Discord. Just join our Discord, engage in conversation, and download the file for you guys. Trust me, guys, when you guys put this build together and when you download the save file and you play it out, you guys are going to be extremely stoked. Now, before we dive into the loadout and all the skill tree, I do have a question for you guys. What is your favorite rocket to use with Flak? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, you guys are missing out on really amazing content, really fun environments, and positive vibes because you guys are not tuning in over on Twitch. We stream daily on Twitch, and we have a ton of fun, and I would definitely like to have that fun with you guys. Stop by, hang out, and check us out over on Twitch. The link is down below. I will see all of you guys over there. So if you guys are watching the gameplay, you guys know that this build is extremely, extremely potent. You guys are seeing how easy and how fast I am flying through the content here. Not only that, but you guys are noticing that I am not going down. Very little bit of damage is being applied, and I am able to re regenerate that health really, really fast. So the, how does this build play out? What are the loadouts and what items do you need? Well, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about it. All right, so let's dive into the skill tree and the loadout on this particular build, guys. This Rocketeer build is extremely amazing. As you guys have seen in the gameplay, we're just primarily only using one weapon. And this weapon is going to suffice for every type of content, whether it be mobbing, whether it be bossing, whether it's doing the Maliwang takedown, or any type of content that comes your way. You'll just kind of just want to use one particular weapon, which is why I'm calling it the Rocketeer build. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the skill tree and talk about the synergy and what we can expect out of this particular build. So, let's go and see what we have available. So, we're going to start off, of course, with our first section, which is going to be the Stalker tree. Now, from the Stalker tree, we're going to be getting a lot of damage and we're also going to be getting a ton of survivability. As you guys were noticing in the gameplay... We did not go down at all. It's just a matter of keeping your, knowing your spacing and maintaining your distance from the enemy. Even though you get kind of relatively close sometimes, you still should be able to stay alive without a problem. So let's start off with the first one. So we're going to be dumping t uh, three points to self-repairing system. What this is going to do, it's going to increase the max health that Flag has, which uh, is really good. But the nice thing is that it will be constantly regenerating. So you're going to be at a really good amount of health. But you will also be regenerating that health as you progress. Then, guys, we're going to be dumping five points into Ferocious Attack. This is a hunter skill that after we shoot an enemy, we're going to gain a stack of Ferocious Attack. Now, the cool thing about this is we're able to stack this up to 10. And when we do and consume this Ferocious Attack, it's going to increase our handling. And our gun damage is going to be increased, plus also our pet damage. Now, the increase of the gun damage is 2 per stack. So 20 is going to put us about, for 10, it's going to put us at 20, uh, you know, gun damage per stack. So, I mean, once we have all the stacks together. Then, guys, we're going to have a one point into Eager to Impress. Once again, another kill skill. So when we kill an enemy, action skill cooldown rate time is uh, is reduced. So that means it's going to allow us to have our rack attacks very often per throughout the entire build. And then, guys, we have a total of three points into Overclocked. What this is going to do, it's going to increase the fire rate flag has, uh, for his weapon so really important since we are running a rocket only for this particular build we are going to need to have this fire rate you know increase due to the fact that you know we want the rocket to be firing very fast then guys we're going to be doing three points into turn tail and run what this is going to do it's going to allow flag to constantly regenerate his health while he's moving so this is going to be extremely important 
because the more mobile you are with Flack, even though he is a little sp slow poke, uh, you are going to be regenerating health and you are going to be getting damage reduction, which is really important. So constantly be moving with this build as it's going to help you progress. And I'll explain a little bit more how you uh, want to play with this build later on in the video. And then we have three points into the fast and the ferocious. While above half health, Flax gun damage and movement speed are increased and their paid gains increase damage. Really important. Then we have one that is extremely important. And, and I think for this particular build, it's going to be even more important due to the fact that you're going to be keeping a distance and you're not going to primarily going to be getting ADS that very much. Hidden Machine is going to give you the advantage that whenever no one's targeting you, uh, you're going to be dealing increased gun damage. So it's going to be going up 30%. That is 30% that you can tap into. That's why keeping your distance and playing with your angles is going to be very important for this build. And then we have two points into Rage and Recovery. Get another kill skill. When we kill someone, our pet is going to regenerate health for a few seconds. And then we have one point to the power inside. Now, theoretically speaking, on this one right here that we dumped a Rage and Recovery, you could theoretically just dump one point and then put an extra point into Lick My Wounds in case you feel like you're going down too much, which you shouldn't be. But if you feel like you're going down too much, you could take away one point from a Rage and Recovery and put it into Lick My Wounds, which is going to give you an extra life that your pet will be able to come and revive you. But you shouldn't be going down. Trust me, guys. Then we have the last point we're going to be using is the power inside. We're dumping the one point in here. And it's going to, again, make our pets increase damage while our action skill is active. If Flak is at full health, the increased damage is double, which is extremely important because the majority of the time we will be at full health. Now, as far as our, our character is concerned and as far as our pets, I do like using the Jabber due to the fact that this is going to give us maximum health and movement speed. So it's really, really good to have. There are other ones you could use, but I prefer personally like using him. And I think he suits this build perfectly because it gives you even more survivability as you get that max health increase. Then well, let's go into the other skill tree. Now for the Hunter skill tree, we have five points into Interplanetary Stalker, which is extremely important. Uh, it's going to give us a little bit more damage and it's going to change the enemy types, which is really important here. So we want to make sure that when we do this, we're going to be increasing our damage with our, you know, with our pet, but also converting different uh, elements of the enemies into robots, humans and beasts. So it's going to be really important. Then we have three points in to leave no trace when Flex scores a critical hit. There is a chance for one ammo to be added back to the magazine. This is just so we are never running out of ammo. As you saw right there throughout the gameplay I was showcasing you guys, uh, you know, we're not running out of ammo even though we're just using one particular weapon. Then we have two points into Hunter's Side. Now this is the only one that I wish I had a little bit more points into. Uh, as of right now, uh, my class mod, the way we have it set up, does not have more points here. But I do, I really would wish that this would have... A little bit more points because it would give us even more damage even though we do not lack on the damage side of this build but you know it's always best to you know be able to have as much damage as you can so flat gains bonus damage from finding different types of enemies so really important here it's going to be giving us that you know damage boost to humans robots and beasts which is really important we're dumping one point into head count now this is where i want to explain just a little bit because this particular one right now is currently not working. It is bugged within the game, and I hope it gets fixed. The reason why I put one point here is because if it does get fixed, that's how you want to have it set up. As of right now, if you are watching this video, and it's as of right now, this date right now, it still hasn't been fixed or hasn't been patched, I would actually not put a point here, and I would add another point to Hunter's side. So you would be three out of five, as opposed to adding this one in the headcount because headcount is currently not working at the current time. Then we have uh, Ambush Predator. We're going to be dumping a total of five points here. While there are no enemies nearby, Flax Weapon Handling and Critical Damage are increased. Now remember, this is going to be really important because it's going to tie in with the other one that we were picking up the 30% where the enemies weren't able to see us. So in addition to that, we'll get the 30 for that. Plus, we'll also get the critical hit damage if uh, you know people are not being uh, enemies are nearby. Since we are keeping our distance, we are keeping that alive. This is definitely a requirement, which is the five points into two fang. Flag has a chance to fire an extra projectile per shot. Really important, really important for this build. It's going to make a rocket even more powerful. And then we have three points into big game. Flag's hunter skill becomes much more effective and have a longer duration. Really important. Then we have a total of three points we're dumping here, but we're picking up an additional three points from our class mod. And this is 100 kill skill whenever Flag kills a badass or stronger enemy. They gain increased critical damage, gun damage, and handling. Now, this is pretty important due to the fact that 
since we are doing Mayhem Mode 10 content and we are doing a lot of uh, you know high-end stuff, we're almost always going to be bumping into badasses. So there's going to be constantly be proccing very, very often. And then we have one point into Galactic Shadow. Flag deals increase critical damage and enemies are less likely to attack them. Really important. And last but not least, guys, one point into Megavore. Flag gains a chance to score a critical hit chance whenever the weapon hits any part of the body. Really, really important. And that pretty much covers the skill tree. Now, from here, guys, we are picking a rack attacks because I do. I think racks are personally my favorite ones to use with flak. There are multiple ways you can play with this. Like, there's a cryo rack build that I'm working on as well. That's going to be very uh, beneficial to you guys. So keep that in mind. Now, remember, guys, before we go into the loadout, I will be sharing this build for you guys. So you guys can download it on my Discord channel. The link is going to be down below. So make sure you guys join the Discord channel and get access to this build. So. Like I was saying, we have the rack attacks, we have the falconer's feast, whenever rack damage an enemy, a portion of that health is restored. This actually helps a lot, guys. You know, a lot of people think like, oh, it's just a little bit of health that's coming back. But since you are shooting your, or throwing or sending your racks to hit enemies constantly, this 7% is going to be very beneficial. And I do like to have a uh, rack accelerator, which is going to increase the cooldown rate of your racks. So you're always going to be having your racks active at every single type. And that pretty much covers the skill tree. Now let's go into the loadout, guys. And this is where things get a little bit interesting because when I say a little bit interesting, I mean things get extremely interesting due to the fact that we are only theoretically using one particular weapon. As you saw throughout my whole gameplay, I was only using one weapon, but you could use multiple of the same weapons, which is why the reason why I call it the Rocketeer build because it only uses rockets, right? So there can be anything better than actually using just rockets throughout the whole game. It just extremely makes the content super duper easy and they do so much damage. So the first one we have here, guys, is of course we have our Yellow Cake. Yellow Cake, as you guys know, is by far the best rocket launcher currently right now in the game. I personally think it's the best rocket launcher. Uh, it just does a ton of damage, and there's so much stuff that you could do, especially with the right anointment. So the anointment here, guys, we're using is gain 300 increased weapon damage against enemies above 90 health. Really important, guys. This is ugh, this thing is, is a monster. It melts, as you guys saw in the gameplay. Then we also have the stuff Plagueber, which is once again running the 300 anointment here. Another really powerful rocket launcher. You guys see this one for that's 42k. This was on 31k. With a different element type here, this is going to be really effective against knocking down shields real fast. Because, of course, that damage is going to be getting increased with that corrosive damage. And then we have the one with uh, extremely powerful guys. The potent nuke with, once again, the 300 increased weapon damage. These three rockets are completely, completely annihilators of any content. But as you guys saw in my gameplay, I was just kind of just messing around with the jello cake. So, then from there on, guys, for our shield, we're using the transformer. One of my favorite shields due to the fact that this is going to be making you super tanky and not allow you to go down. We do have the action skill and gain 50 bonus cryo damage while the weapon is fired uh, for 10 seconds. So really important. We want to stack up that cryo damage. Cryo damage is by far, by far my favorite damage out of all of them because it's very effective against everything. So really important. Our grenades, guys, we're using the Cloner Hunter Seeker. This is on action skill and aim 50 bonus corrosive damage with the weapon for 10 seconds. We're tapping into that corrosive damage. Our grenades are not extremely important here. We just want to make sure we get that annoyment. Now, you could theoretically run a, a hex. You could run any other grenade you want here as long as you got that action skill end. Now, for our class mod, we're running the Frenetic Bounty Hunter. This is really important as this is going to be beneficial to you guys because that's what allowing us to stack that critical hit damage. And basically what this is going to do is that bosses are now treated as humans, beasts, and robotics for Flex Hunter skill. So that's going to allow us to get that additional uh, damage that we're getting from our skill tree. So making it really, really powerful. Now, we're here we have a plus 18 weapon critical hit damage, plus 25 weapon damage, and plus 31 action skill cooldown rate. This is really good. There could be possibly better uh, attributes here we could tap into, but I kind of like the what we have here. We could probably get something like a critical hit or a splash damage, which would be really important. Last but not least, guys, for our artifact, we're using the Pearl of Knowledge. This is going to be really important because it's going to stack damage increase plus 90%. We got the 50 plus magazine size and regenerates plus 2072 health for seconds. Really, really important. Consecutive successful hits grants some one increased damage per hit for 15 times. This is going to be really, really important because it's going to be stacking our damage with our yellow cape. So after going through the skill tree and after going to the lottery, how exactly do you want to play with this build? Well, to play with this build, it's super duper easy, guys. Want to lob your nade, 
Want to lobby racks, fire the yellow cake. Really easy, guys. Really easy. You do want to maintain your distance, though. You do not want to be up close to the enemy because that splash damage or if there's any barrels, that will blow up, will kind of make you go down. So you want to make sure you keep your distance, keep your angles, and make sure that when you're firing at enemies, you're behind cover due to the fact that you want to be tapping into that additional 50% that we're going to be getting for when enemies aren't looking at you, which is like 30%. And when you have that additional 20% when enemies are not targeting you. So you want to tap into those crit hits and that maximum damage because you want to play your angles and make sure that when you're shooting a yellow kick, you're shooting him at an angle where enemies are not being seen. Now, the cool thing about the yellow kick, theoretically, you can shoot it above the enemy and it will explode and cause damage. This will be extremely effective, especially against Wotang. So if you guys are trying to, you know, do the... The melee wine takedown really effective. Make sure you guys keep your distance and shoot the rocket above his head so it can penetrate the uh, dome that he is around him. And that overall is pretty much my rocketeer build, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this rack attack, rack a, I should call this rack a rocket, rack a rocket build. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget, guys, if you want to tap into this build, the link is down below to our Discord channel so you guys can download this ASAP. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.